hello everybody. I'm Ryan Zoner from Algo Communication Products, and today I'm going to give a walkthrough of the Algo Device Management Platform. Uh, this is a solution that we offer here at Algo to help organizations manage, monitor their Algo endpoints. Uh, it's a cloud-based solution, and, and I'm going to dive into that today. So first thing first, we'll dive right into the device. So when we log in, we're going to log into the Algo Device Management Platform, and we will see ourselves landing at a dashboard. What we're seeing here in front of us today is a sample environment. Uh, I'll walk through some of what we see, what we can do, what we can't do in the solution, um, and give a general overview. So on our dashboard, we're getting a key summary of the most important information. How many devices are on my network that I'm managing? Um, where these, how many licenses I may have? How many licenses are available? All that key information is here at the top. Um, as we continue through, we can see a summary of how many of our devices are connected or online, devices that may be able to be upgraded to the latest firmware, as well as a summary of all the devices that we have within this ecosystem. Um, as a reminder, this is a solution to manage and monitor your devices in the cloud. Algo devices can be registered into your ADMP account, and it gives you the ability to see devices across multiple sites, across multiple networks, and be able to monitor them from any location. So this dashboard gives us a quick little summary. Um, but if we'd uh, like to dive into the, the root of what's in the ADMP, we'll go here on the left-hand side navigation where we have the ability to manage our devices, configure our devices, and even integrate with zero touch provisioning if that's turned on in your ADMP account. So if we first had to manage and we'll go to the monitor devices section, what we're gonna see here is a list of devices that are set up to be managed in this ADMP account. In this case, there's 19 devices um, and you'll see them all kind of laid out here in a nice simple way. You can change how many you see. I'm gonna expand that so we see all devices here on one, one screen. You're gonna see your device ID, IP addresses. You're gonna see them devices being named, what product it is, what firmware it's running. As you'll see, there's a variety of tags that can be applied and whether the device is connected, disconnected, what status it may be in. Uh, from here, you have the ability to do a variety of activities. The first I'll show is if I just go to any one device, you can see we have three little dots over here. It's going to give us some options from testing the device, rebooting the device, trying to upgrade to the latest firmware, pushing config, setting volumes, or adding tags. So this device, I could check to see if there's a firmware upgrade. I can go to upgrade latest. It does a check for me. The latest firmware is installed. If I go one device down in the list, I can see it's running a slightly older firmware version. I could hit upgrade latest. It'll recommend me the firmware module that I could upgrade to. If I click upgrade, the upgrade process will begin. This device will begin upgrading. As I'm doing that on one device, I could do it on many devices. Uh, if I, this device uh, seems to be struggling to upgrade, uh, it might be running a beta firmware. Uh, I could select all the devices and then I would be able to uh, hit this and then in mass take multiple actions across many, many devices. So you have control over a variety of activities there. Um, from here, we could also do certain things. I'm gonna go to the device that's configured to my test location. Uh, this device here is sitting in my home office. If I were to hit test, um, it will test the device and I'm hearing that here ringing on my desk confirming this device is online, it's active, and that is my device. Um, this also has the ability for some key quick features, something like setting the volume, very common to be desired to do quickly and easily. If I wanna change the volume on this device, Maybe I want to change the ring volume up to ring volume seven, set that. My device has now changed volume. If I test it, I'm now getting the device much louder here in my, uh, my home office environment. So that's really an overview of where you can manage the devices. We can see a little bit of everything there. Um, we're able to push configs as well and some other features. Uh, in the configure section where I'll go to next, you have the ability here to have tagging of any of your devices. I can create any tags. I might create a tag here and I'll make an example. Sample tag one, give that a tag, give it, uh, that's now added to my tag list. I can now apply that to any device in my monitored section. If I wanted to 
you know, add this tag and I want to add that now to have you know, sample tag one that gets out of there. So you can see we have mul multiple tags and with that tagging feature, I can now search. So if I search for sample, uh, let's type that incorrectly. If we search for sample, we'll see that it simplifies and finds just that device. If I search for something where maybe it's on a few of them, like conference room, now I'm seeing everything associated with the conference room. So the tags allow you to very easily search and filter for devices. The search functionality is also being able, you could search against product codes and find certain things as well. Um, you could search against uh, product names. If I want to find visual alerters, I'll search for visual alerters. All of that is functional in there, and it makes it very easy um, to search and use those tags. Back into the configured section, in addition to tags, we also have the ability to upload configuration files. And we can either push those configuration files and save them there. So you can see in this example, we have one configuration file saved on our ADMP account. This is associated with a warehouse horn speaker. If I wanted to push this config to a device, that config is here. You can see if I wanted to preview it, I could preview it. In this case, it's a test config file, so we're not seeing anything there. But I could take this and I go back to the monitor section, pick whatever device. Let's say I want to take this device here and I want to push a config. I can go to push config. Um, it's going to give a warning that there's going to be a reboot. There's only one config option, so I'll select that and I'll go to push that config. And now it will push that config to that device. It'll tell you that it's going through configuration and then it will ultimately um, reboot that device and that device will have your latest config. So super easy to push configs. Um, that way you'll be able to uh, manage that as ever, however you'd like. One more thing I'd put on the config side, um, if you were looking to get your config, you might go to one of your devices. You need to be on that local network. So in this case, I'm going to go to this device here on my local network. I'm logged into this 8180. From my systems tab of the device, I could download my configuration file. Go here, it'll download my config and save this file, upload it to the ADMP, and then I could apply that same configuration file to many devices uh, in my ADMP account. So that gives you a general overview of what you can do with the configuration module. Simple, easy to use, tagging, pushing configurations. Um, the last thing maybe I'll run through is just setting up a device to register into the ADMP. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a cloud-based platform. Uh, devices that register into the ADMP do so by uh, calling home to the cloud platform. So the devices need access to the internet. Um, but if I go into my device, um, this is where you can have control of uh, setting up your configuration. So in this case, if I go to my device, I start at the basic page. If I go into advanced settings, I go into admin. Under the admin tab, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see here a section called ADMP cloud monitoring. For this device, it is enabled. I'm going to disable it for a second. If it's disabled, there you go. When you enable it, it'll pop open this section, and you can enter your account ID. This is your ADMP account ID. Once this is entered and saved, the device will show up in your ADMP account. Just to show you where you can get that account ID, if I go back to my ADMP account, there's two places I can find that. First and foremost, in the top right-hand corner with the icon, I can see my account ID, and to make it easy for you, there's a little copy button, so you can copy that and take it over to your device. Um, you can also see uh, in your settings section of this account here, you can see what your account ID is. So you have the ability to, uh, to access that from multiple cases. A couple last things I will just close off with with an overview of the ADMP account. Um, so first is that uh, licenses are available in 25 pack bundles. That allows you to monitor up to 25 devices per bundle. Um, that is a small ongoing annual cost associated with this solution. Um, Algo does offer a free trial account. So if anyone was looking to trial this out, understand the solution, see if it's the right fit for them. We're always happy to set anyone up on a, a three month trial account, get an idea of how it can work and build it out. We also have a robust roadmap of additional features that are going to be released through the rest of the year and into following years. So uh, the port, this solution will continue to get reinforced, new features, additional functionality. So we're quite excited about where that can go. Uh, we're finding more and more organizations find this to be a, uh, a useful solution. So that's a quick summary of the Algo device management platform. Um, if you have any questions about the platform, you know, feel free to, to, to engage our team. We're, we're happy to work with anybody on that. 
so thank you very much for the time today. Uh, thank you.